So what are you guys? We are the Sparkwood family. So I want to do some genetics problems, but I want to keep them at the MCAT level. And then I want to talk a little bit about justifying like why we can do the things that you probably do naturally. But if you do it naturally, I don't want to mess with it uh, and make it become so formal that like, you know, it gets, the formalism gets in the way. Okay, so a couple things. Number one, let's say, um, okay. Let's say we have something that's diploid, and from that we're going to get haploid gametes, right? And I want to know, given this setup here, how many gametes can you get? How many different gametes? Okay, so very, very mellow, but this is really from Bio4. I talked about it in passing. I just want to make sure we're comfortable with this, okay? So one thing is this. You know what's going to happen is since that gamete, we're going to put one from here, one from here, one from here, one from here, etc. Okay? And the way you think about it is, how many different gametes can you get? So here, big A, little a, you, get, you have two choices, so there are two possibilities. For big B, big B, there's only one possibility. It's just big B, right? Here again, two choices, one, one, and again, big F, little f, two possibilities, so we have two choices. Okay, and again, two, and again, one, okay? Now the rule of thumb for us in class was basically like, how do you do this, right? Do you add them, do you multiply? Um, if you don't like this stuff, the easiest way to think about it is you need to get a result. So the result isn't figure out what A, B, and C are doing, but forget everybody else. To get a complete result, you need to look at everything, right? So in order to have an answer, you have to go through all of these different choices. In the middle of making choices, right, you multiply. So in other words, if I want to go through this stuff, since I have to choose this and this and this and all that other crud, you're going to have to multiply. Okay, and that looks like it's 2, 4, 8, 16, right? Okay, not too bad. So 16 different options. But one way to maybe see this or think about it is this, only this one time. Like, you know, I never do this in class, but since we have time and like virtual office hours, why not? Um, the setup is this, you need to choose. So here you are, and for your gamut, you're gonna choose either big A, little A. Okay, and after that though, how many choices for big B? Well, it's just big B, no choice, right? Just big B. Okay. After that, though, how about for C? Well, the two options. You can go big C, little c. Big C, little c. Does everybody see what I'm doing here? So what ends up happening is this. In the beginning, you have two choices, right? For each of these choices, you only have one option, big B, so nothing changes. But now if you look at this, so here, we're still at two. For each of these, say like this guy, for big B, right, you have two options for C. You can either choose big C or little c. So what you've done so far, if you've gone this path, you've gone big A, big B. Okay, so here's where you are. Once you're here, right, you have two choices. You can go big C or little c. Does everybody agree? So there's one path that takes you big C and another, let's say purple, that takes you little c. Okay, what about over here where you've gone little a, big B, right? And again, two options. So there, you're here, there are two options, one up here and one down there. Okay, so let me get this straight. Basically, you have two different branches, and then for each of these, for each of these two, you have two choices for this guy, two choices for that guy. That's literally the definition of multiplication. That's like two times two, or four. Okay? Does everybody see that? So, basically, the thinking is, any time you have a string of options. So let's make it simpler. Let's look at this. Let's say you had this. Okay? What's happening here is this. You have big A and little a. Okay, once you pick one of these, you have two options, right? For each of these options, you have two options here. Big, little, big, little. Does everybody agree? So two options here, two for each of these, that's two times two, that's four. But you can see that directly, four guys, right? But then for each of these four, you have two options for C, right? You can go big C, little c, big C, little c, big C, little c. It's getting cumbersome to kind of write here, but uh, and maybe C wasn't the best choice of letter, huh? Let's make, I'll make big C green so you can tell which ones are supposed to be big C's. So does everybody see that? So thinking is basically like this. For each choice here, one, two, three, four, you have two options for each of the four. That's, mm -hmm. that's gotta be four times two, right? So it's eight. And you can see that, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, uh, don't mind the fact that I encircled these guys. I just want to distinguish like the big guys from the little guys, and that is it. So you want to keep it mellow like this, okay? 
Not too bad, right? I think it's much better to think of it this way. I mean, if you want to nerd it out and come up with the formula, that's great. If you want to sit there and go like, ah, they're really like capitals and lowercase or like um, majuscules and minuscules, you could do that too. But yeah, we don't need to go there. So now let's do another one. Let's do now some actual computations with genetics using the probability thing. But remember, it's not worth us really doing probability for the test. But let's say this is a boy and this is a girl. Okay. This is literally Mars with a spirit to go kill something, and this is Venus looking in our mirror. Okay? So anyway, just we'll use this easy notation. And let's say uh, you have two siblings, and you want to know. And the options are your siblings are going to be, you know they're either boys or girls. You want the probability that both your siblings, one older, one younger, are girls. Okay? So what's the probability here? Let's start with this. Now, the formal rules of probability are a little bit more trickier than this, but for our thinking, it's going to be totally fine. Let's assume that everything's independent, meaning the older sibling being a girl has no effect on the younger sibling being a girl, and that's pretty solid for most MCAT problems. So let's start with this. What's the probability? Assume there's a 50-50 shot, boy or girl. Well, the probability of the older one being a girl is one half, okay? And then the probability of the younger one being a girl is also one half, right? Same rule kind of applies. In the middle of making choices, in other words, you're not happy if the older one's a girl, and you're not happy if the younger one's a girl. To be happy, you have to have them both be girls, right? So because of that, you will multiply, and you get a quarter, okay? If you want to enter this out, this is basically like two different events, and you're looking for the intersection, so they're happening together. And a lot of people use the word and. There's nothing wrong with that, but actually think about what's going on, okay? All right, well, then how about this? Uh, you have a sibling. And you really don't care, you'd be happy if your sibling was a, a, a girl or a boy. Okay. okay, so think about what would make you happy. You'd be happy if your sibling was a boy or if the, your sibling was a girl. Okay, so what's the probability your sibling is a girl? It's one half. What's the probability your sibling's a boy? It's one half. But now let's think about it this way. You don't need both, right? You just want one sibling and it's either a boy or a girl. That's it. So if your sibling were a girl, you'd be happy. The requirement is a boy or a girl. Okay, so you're completely good. Okay, but if your sibling happened to be a boy, you also would be happy. You would also be happy, right? So again, just completely different way of getting what you want. When you have different ways of getting what you want, you add, which is one. And that makes sense, right? The only options are boy and girl, uh, and you're gonna have one of them, then it's gotta be 100%, right? A probability of one. Okay, no big deal. All right, so let's make this a little bit more complicated, but the rules remain the same. By the way, I do want to do one more thing. There's a thing I'm probably called conditioning. You, what you do instinctively will be right. So let me demonstrate this for you. Let's say you roll a six-sided die. Okay. What's the probability you roll a one? Probability you roll a one, where there, there's only one one out of six options, so it's one out of six. Okay, now I'm gonna kinda of do it a funky way to show you what I mean by conditioning. Let's do it in pieces. What's the probability you get an odd guy? So for an odd guy, you have three options, one, three, and five, out of a total of six. Okay, but then given that your number, so assuming that the guy you've rolled is odd, what's the likelihood it's a one? Well, there are only three odd numbers, one, three, and five, and one is one of them, so it's one out of three. Okay, so this is like getting a one. So, but it's not literally rolling a one, because you know the probability of rolling one is one out of six, right? It's the likelihood that you get a one given as a fact, right, that the number is odd. Okay. Well, when you multiply these, you'll get one six. And what you've seen is we've computed it the same way. You can just do straight out, what's the probability of rolling a one? Or you could do, all right, roll a guy. In order to be a one, first I need you to be what? I need you to be odd. And then given that you are odd, I need you to be one. Okay? So, a lot of this sort of thinking, believe it or not, even though this is more strung out in this case, you do very instinctively. So I don't want to really go into the formalism it's, there. It follows our rule though, right? In the middle of making choices, you multiply. So assume the problem where, what's the probability of getting a one? You're not happy unless you get that one, right? One step in doing that would be like, get an odd guy. Then it's, given an odd guy, actually get your one. So it's very similar, right? It's a sense of, in the middle of making choices or in the middle of getting things done for yourself, you multiply, okay? That rule works, and actually that rule works all the time. Okay, whether the events are independent or not, um, we don't want to get too heavy into it because I think instinctively you will do this. But you can always do that. Break a guy up into different cases, look at one possibility, 
And then given that possibility, just keep narrowing it down and down and down until you get what you want. Okay? So again, I would never, ever do this. And I'm not going to explain this in this video. Uh, maybe if you want to do a video on probability, not MCAT stuff, I would do it. But this is equivalent to you want A and B, right? Uh, and what is that? That can be done as the probability of A given B times the probability of B, which in this case would look like you want the probability of being odd and 1, which is really the probability of rolling a 1. This would be like the probability of rolling a 1 and being odd, which is the same as just rolling a 1. And down here would be what? It's the probability of rolling a 1 given that you're odd, which is exactly what we have here, times the probability of B being you're odd, okay? which is what you have over here. Okay? I don't want to do that, but if you're curious about that, let us know. We can do a separate video on that. Okay? That's not what we want to do here. This genotype will give you that phenotype. Over here, again, you're getting brown fur, and over here, you're getting yellow fur. Okay? Okay. And let's say you can end up male or female, and the probability there is a half. All right, so here's my first question for you. So let's say we have an AA cross an AA. Okay? I want to know. What's the probability you get a girl that has brown fur? OK, like we're talking puppies or whatever. OK, so um, help me out. What do you guys think? And my bad, before we do this, I'm going to tell you this problem. It is these guys are autosomal, meaning it's not sex linked. So as opposed to our standard YouTube videos, this is really meant for uh, you know, virtual office hours for a class. So that assumes you're comfortable with autosomal, sex-linked, stuff like that. Okay, so help me out. What do you guys think? So in this case, we go for brown fur. So you're probably thinking, okay, to get brown, you can get this guy, the heterozygous form, or the homozygous dominant. So what's the likelihood? Well, can you get homozygous dominant? Let's practice this a long way. Now, technically, like we always say in class, the MCAT is so mellow, the most you ever have to do is a two by two. So if you're literally doing a four by four, there's definitely a gimpy way out, okay? Here in this case, you could really just write it like this. Just write out the Punnett square. And you can go, you're brown if you're double big A or big A little A. So that means you would be brown if you're here, right? So in that region. So it looks like the probability is 3 quarters. Okay. Just for practice, in case they make it a little bit more complicated, though it won't get much more complicated, maybe let's say I want the probability, there are two cases. You would be happy if you ended up with big A, big A, because that would give you brown. But you would also be happy if you ended up with big A, little A, because that too would give you brown. So two different ways of getting what you want. So you already know, different ways of getting what you want. In the end, we're going to add them up. All right. But let's compute the probability of getting big A, big A. The probability of getting big A, well, from the left, it's 1 out of 2, so it's 50%. OK, the probability of getting big A from here, well, that's also 1 out of 2, so that's 50%. But you're not good with having the first one be big A, and you're not good with the second one being big A. They both have to be big A's, right? Which means you need both things to happen. You know a mnemonic for that, right? You've got to get this and that. So in the middle of doing things, you need to multiply. So this is really a quarter. And you can see that here. It's one option out of four. OK, now let's do this. What's the probability of big A? Well, it's going to be a half. What's the probability of little A? It's going to be a half. This one's a little bit more complicated because even though I wrote big A, little A, I'm not implying that order matters. I just mean here the heterozygous guy. Okay? So standard in so standard thing in genetics, right? We don't care about the order of these guys. So there are two ways. The first one, from the left you could have gotten big A, and from the right you could have gotten little A. So that's one way of getting what you want, and you're totally happy. But now it's like a mini problem. But another way you could have been happy was to get little a from the left and big A from the right. The probability of getting little a from the left is a half, and big A from the right is a half. Right? So what you compute here, this is the probability of getting this, and the, this is the probability of getting that. And in order to get both guys down, you need to multiply. You need to do both actions. But if you got big A, little a, you'd be happy. If you got little a, big A, you'd be happy. So different ways of getting what you want, you add. So this actually ends up being a half. OK, there you go. But now, two different cases, both being different ways of getting what you want. So you add them together. So that would be 1 quarter plus 1 half, which is 3 quarters, Okay, which is exactly what you got here. 
Now at this point, especially if you're not in the class, you might be like, why don't you just do that? That's so much faster. And honestly, on the test, sure, no problem. But there are other problems they can do that are slightly trickier, not that much more, but where this sort of thinking helps you out. And in general, there could be even easier problems where your actions really deciding do you add or do you multiply. So I figured this would be a good example to kind of take us through that. Okay? All right. By the way, let me, uh, let me add a caveat here. Is this actually the correct answer? So after all that work, is this the correct answer? And the answer to that, believe it or not, is no. It is not actually the correct answer. Then you're like, then why the hell do we do all this? Because the part here that's tricky is actually verbal. So if you look at this, it doesn't say, well, what it says is this, you have a child. It doesn't tell you anything about the child. And it says, what's the probability the child is a girl that has brown fur? So what we've actually computed is the probability that you have brown fur. But we haven't computed the probability you're a girl. So the probability you're a girl is, one half. So everybody see that? This is another big point I'm trying to make. So it's kind of like a super problem where we do a bunch of crud together. So you want to be a girl there, and you want to have brown fur. We know the probability of having brown fur is 3 quarters. But is it enough to have brown fur? No. Is it enough to be a girl? No. You need both. So you need both things to make you happy. In the middle of making choices, meaning choose this and choose this, you need to multiply. So the actual answer is 3 eighths. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. But, I know, but the reason why I did this is sometimes they word it that way. On the MCAT, sometimes they're like, what's the probability that the child is a girl that has brown fur? You'd have to run it this way. But they could phrase it like this, and it is completely verbal. My favorite part of the exam, right? But the verbal side would be basically be this. What if they said instead, you have a girl? So they tell you straight up you have a girl. What's the probability that that girl has brown fur? So if you're already dealing with a girl, they tell you you have a girl, this is not an issue, it's a given. And because of that, you would just compute the probability of having brown fur, and that really would be 3 quarters. Okay? I know that sounds like a pain, but they actually do that. So you actually have to pay attention to the problem. It's more about the verbiage, right? Are you talking about probability of having a girl that has brown fur? Or if you have a girl, what's the likelihood that girl has brown fur? Okay? So different problems altogether. Let's say the setup is still this. Except this time, I'm going to tell you it's sex-linked. 